good morning children how are you i think you all of you fine okay are you following my classes okay children in the last session we have studied third unit transportation it is one of the circulatory system we have completed in this unit what is transportation what is circulatory system and uh, activity 1 pulse rate activity 2 you have you have to make uh, own stethoscope and activity 3 and uh, external structure of heart and internal structure of heart and uh, the blood vessels and uh, circulation in the last topic arteries and veins and uh, blood capillaries these are the discussed in the previous session now we are going to the cardiac cycle and uh, single circulation and double circulation lymphatic system and evolution of the transport system blood pressure coagulation of blood next to how minerals transport within the plant here activity 5 observing root heads and what is root pressure and the mechanism by which the water travels through the plant transport of mineral salts and transport of manufactured food these topics are we covered in this session okay children okay children next we are going to the first topic today first topic the cardiac cycle do you know children what is cardiac cycle okay i will tell you one contraction and one relaxation of atria and ventricles is called one cardiac cycle now let us see the explanation of cardiac cycle okay children in the first step deoxygenated blood from vena cava and oxygenated blood from pulmonary veins enter the right and left atria respectively then both the atria contract forcing the blood to enter the ventricles when ventricles are filled with blood they start contracting and atria start relaxing this is the first step of cardiac cycle next step the second one on ventricular contraction the blood moves into the aorta and pulmonary artery the operators between the atria and ventricles are closed by walls we can listen to the first sharp sound of the heart lub this is the second part of cardiac cycle next one when the ventricles start relaxing the pressure in the ventricles is reduced the blood which has entered the arteries tries to be tries to come back into the ventricles the walls which are present in the blood vessels are closed to prevent backward flow of blood into the ventricles this is the third step next one the fourth step of cardiac cycle then we can listen to dull sound of the heart that is called dub the atria are filled up with blood and are ready to pump them into the ventricles here the children the sequential events 
in the heart which are cyclically repeated is called cardiac cycle it includes an active phase systole and and a resting phase the diastole of atria and ventricles the whole process is completed in the approximately 0.8 seconds the time needed for atrial contraction is 0.11 between 0.14 seconds the time needed for ventricle contraction is 0.27 between 0.35 seconds this is the cardiac cycle okay children next we are going to pulse already you know that children what is pulse the regular throbbing of the arteries caused by the successive contractions of the heart that is called blood is pumped into the blood vessels at regular intervals this is called as pulse the rate of the pulse will be equal to the number of heart beats here see children next blood pressure next we are going to blood pressure bp bp means blood pressure bp means blood pressure see children in 9th class we studied about blood and its components blood grouping etc in the chapter animal tissues now we will discuss some other points related to blood here see children generally you have heard the word bp yes what is bp yes to move the blood through this network of vessels a great deal of force is required the force is provided by the heart and is and is at its highest when the ventricles contract forcing the blood out of the heart and into the arteries then there is a drop in the pressure as the ventricles refill with blood for the next beat here see children bp is always measured in the upper arm artery bp varies throughout the body so a standard place must be used to so that a person blood pressure can be count of time here doctors measures measure the blood pressure with a device called sphygmomanometer there are two pressure readings one measure one measures the strongest pressure during the time blood is forced out of the ventricles that is called systolic pressure the systolic pressure the active phase of cardiac cycle when the heart contracts it pumps blood from the heart chambers into the aorta and pulmonary artery it will be 120 mm of hg for a healthy young adults it will be 120 mm of hg the second reading is taken during the resting period as the ventricles refill with blood this is called diastolic pressure diastolic pressure the resting phase of the cardiac cycle when the heart relaxes it allows the chambers to be filled with blood from vena cava it will be 80 mm of hg young adults 
ఇట్ విల్ బి ఎం ఎయిటీ ఎంఎం ఆఫ్ హెచ్జి బిపి విల్ చేంజ్ అకార్డింగ్ టు అకార్డింగ్ టు ద యాక్టివిటీ ఇన్ విచ్ ద పర్సన్ ఈజ్ ఎంగేజ్డ్ సచ్ యాజ్ రెస్టింగ్ వాకింగ్ అండ్ రన్నింగ్ పీపుల్ హూ హ్యావ్ హై బిపి డ్యూరింగ్ రెస్టింగ్ పీరియడ్ ఆర్ సెట్ టు హ్యావ్ హైపర్ టెన్షన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ద బిపి బ్లడ్ ప్రెజర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ డివైస్ యూజ్ టు మెజర్ టు బ్లడ్ ప్రెజర్ ఫర్ ఎ హెల్దీ యంగ్ అడల్ట్ బ్లడ్ ప్రెజర్ వన్ ట్వంటీ ఎం వన్ ట్వంటీ బై ఎయిటీ ఎంఎం హెచ్జి ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ నార్మల్ బిపి వెన్ ఎవర్ సి చిల్డ్రన్ ఇన్ ద ఇన్ ద రేట్ ఆఫ్ డిక్రీజింగ్ బ్లడ్ ప్రెజర్ దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ లో బిపి ఇన్ ద రేట్ ఆఫ్ నార్మల్ బిపి వాల్యూస్ అబౌ ద నార్మల్ బిపి వాల్యూస్ దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ హై బిపి హియర్ ద దిస్ ఈస్ ద బ్లడ్ ప్రెజర్ నెక్స్ట్ చిల్డ్రన్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సింగిల్ సర్క్యులేషన్ అండ్ డబుల్ సర్క్యులేషన్ already we know that about what is circulation children it is a specialized system here the single circulation if the blood goes to the heart only once before it reaches all the body parts it is called single circulation that means here blood goes to the heart heart to body parts only once children that is called single circulation the best examples of single circulation fishes next second one double circulation if the blood passes twice through the heart between heart and lungs and from heart to other body parts this is the double circulation the best examples of double circulation amphibians reptiles birds mammals etc next children here see children in your textbook page number 59 single circulation and double circulation see the diagrams and identify the parts and also label the parts from your observation it is clear that in figure 11a blood flows through heart only once to complete one circulation next if blood flows through heart only once for completing one circulation is called single circulation if the blood flows through the heart twice for completing one circulation it is called double circulation you can identify and label the parts in your textbook children okay okay children okay children next we are going to the next topic lymphatic system here do you know children what is the lymphatic system it is also same the so blood circulatory system the system having tubes nodes and lymph is called lymphatic system here see children a blood flows through tissues and through blood capillaries some amount of fluids and certain solid materials are constantly flowing out of the out of them at different junctions such materials are to be collected and sent back into blood circulation this is called a lymphatic system have you ever observed uh, children what happened to your feet after overnight journey in sitting position 
without moving yes we feel that our foot work is little tight in elders it will be clear that the lower part of the legs will be swollen this stage is called edema we feel that our footwear footwear is little tight during the journey if we travel without moving and only in sitting position then our feet will swell this stage is called edema okay children next tissue fluids we know that blood circulates in the blood vessels pushed by the heart from the heart it flows into the arteries and finally into the capillaries to supply nutrients to the cells the liquid portion of the blood with nutrients flows out of the capillaries this is called tissue fluid this is called tissue fluid lymph is the vital link between blood and tissues by which essential substance pass from blood to cells and excretory products from cells to blood the lymphatic system is a parallel system to venous system which collects tissue fluid from tissues and transports into the venous system blood is the blood is a substance which contains solid and liquid particles here lymph lymph is the substance that contains blood without solid particles here see children blood is a substance which contains solid and liquid particles here lymph is a lymph is the substance that contains blood without solid particles this is the main differences between blood and lymph tissue fluid is lymph present in the tissues here next children serum the liquid portion after formation of blood clot is serum the muscles which are attached to the skeleton act as pumps when they contract and help in pushing the lymph flowing in lymphatic vessels and the blood flowing in veins towards the heart the walls are present in lymphatic vessels and veins stop the reverse flow of blood this is the lymphatic system here see children the walls that are present in the lymphatic vessels and veins stop the reverse flow of blood we shall read about this as the system of lymphatic circulation in detail in higher classes okay children okay children next we are going to evolution of the transport here see children when the unicellular organisms separated themselves from the sea with the formation of the limiting membrane the problem of transportation arose the nature has found the solution by creating a microscope ocean which has its own currents here see children in unicellular organisms protoplasm shows natural movements these movements are called brownian movements here the uh, one mark question or half mark question will come to your exam point of view children what is brownian movements give some examples here once recall the brownian movements protoplasm shows natural movements these movements are called brownian movements 
the best examples of brownian movements amoeba protozoans and and cnidarians here see children amoeba 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 here see children amoeba through the protoplasm brownian movements through the protoplasm protozoans in protozoans brownian movements beating of flagella cnidarians blind sac like gastrovascular cavity here gastrovascular cavity which has the function of digestion and transportation of nutrients to each and every cell of the body next uh, evolution next phylum platyhelminthes most of the body occupied by digestive and excretory system next uh, nematyhelminthes nematy helminthes have pseudo coelom it has taken up the function of collection and distribution of materials next uh, annelids this is the first uh, ucelomates next the phylum the annelids it is the first ucelomate animals have developed a pulsatile vessel to move the fluid and the transporting medium is blood next to the arthropods here the arthropod arthropods have developed a pulsatile organ to pump the blood the heart the blood instead of flowing in blood vessels flow, floats the floats the tissues directly supplying the nutrients to the tissues oxygen is directly supplied to the tissues directly by the respiratory system it is called as a here open circulatory system which supplies nutrients to the tissues directly is called as os ocs open circulatory system open circulatory system the best examples of open circulatory system arthropods molluscans lower caudates next the other type of transportation system where the blood takes the responsibility of delivering delivering the materials which flows in the blood vessels that is called closed type of circulatory system here which flows in the blood vessels is called closed circulatory system this is the short form of closed type of circulatory system ccs the best examples of closed circulatory system annelids echinodermatous cephalopods molluscs higher animals this is the evolution of the transport okay children next we are going to another important part in the story of blood is coagulation Co here blood clotting is the biological phenomena here see children which helps the man to survive when she meets severe injuries whenever there is an injury blood clots within 3 to 6 minutes when the body is cut or injured the blood flows out of the wound only for a short time then the clot is filled with a reddish solid material the platelets or thrombos th thrombocytes are collected at the site of the injury 
run from a plug which is called blood clot when the blood flows out the platelets release an enzyme called thrombokinase thrombokinase acts on another substance present in the blood called prothrombin it is converting into the into thrombin prothrombin is converted into thrombin in the presence of thrombo thrombokinase thrombin acts on another substance called fibrinogen fibrinogen converted into fibrin in the presence of thrombins the blood cells get entangled entangled in the fibrin fibers for fibrin fibers are attached to the edges of the wound and pull them together normally the blood that oozes from a wound clots in 3 to 6 minutes but in some people due to vitamin k deficiency it takes more time this is the coagulation of blood next hemophilia do you know children hemophilia yes what is hemophilia blood may not coagulate because of genetic disorder this is called as hemophilia hemophilia okay children next we are going to how materials transport within the plants here uh, once recall them children von helmens experiment in plants which get water that contain minerals from soil through their roots the water absorbed by roots and food prepared by leaves are supplied to the remaining part of the plant by vascular bundle having xylem and phloem this is the transportation within the plant here see children there is a vast transport system in continual supply of essential nutrients and oxygen to perform metabolic activities and to the and to remove excretory substances which are found in each cell of animal body is there anything like that in plants which corresponds to circulatory system yes in previous classes we studied about von helmens experiment experiments on plants here which get water contain minerals from soil through their roots the water absorbed by roots and food prepared by leaves are supplied to the remaining parts of the plant by vascular bundle having xylem and phloem in the root the xylem tissue is situated towards the exterior while in the stem it is arranged in bundles towards the center this is the transportation within the plants next we can we know that roots absorb water with minerals from soil how is this possible let's we we can do an small experiment okay children here observing root hairs the aim of this activity to show water is absorbed by the root hair what is the apparatus in this activity mustard seedlings filter paper slide cover slip microscope the procedure of this activity first of all mustard seedlings grown on wet 
filter paper are examined next a mass of fine threads developing from the seeds are absorbed by handle lens those fine threads are root hairs through which water enters the plant a portion of the root hair is squashed gently between slide and cover slip in a water drop it absorbed under a microscope the thin thin thinness of the walls walls of the root hair is noted here observations children what we have observed in the in this activity it is observed that water enters the root hairs and passes in inwards from cell to cell until it reaches xylem vessels root hair grow out in the out into the spaces between the soil particles and that the hairs are surrounded by soil water this is the observing root hairs and small activity okay children next we are going to an another activity that is called what is root pressure here see children do you know children what is root pressure yes now now i will discuss with you the movement of water from root hairs to xylem vessels through root cells develops a pressure in the xylem vessels which force the water upward this total pressure is known as root pressure here see children find out the root pressure by an small activity okay first of all the aim of this activity to show root pressure in the plants here what operators we need in this activity potted plant glass tube clamp rubber tube tub next what is the procedure of this activity a potted plant is watered regularly next a cot is made on the stem of the potted plants 1 cm above the ground level next a glass tube is connected by means of a strong rubber tube next the size of glass tube should be equal to the size of the stem here stem is tightly bound with tube so that water cannot escape from the tube water is poured in the glass tube until water level is seen above the rubber tube the level of water is marked m1 in the tube whole experiment is kept undisturbed for 2 to 3 hours water level in the tube is absorbed and marked m2 here see children what you have observed in this activity here water level increases from m1 to m2 here what is the inference of this activity inference pressure in the xylem vessels made the movement of water from root hair to xylem vessel through the root cells pressure forces the water upward this total pressure is known as root pressure okay children after the root pressure we are going to the mechanism by which the water travels 
through the plants we have seen that there is a push from below due to root pressure on the columns of water in the xylem vessels here do you know children transpiration already we have studied in the previous class seventh transpiration here once recall them children evaporation of water through leaves is called transpiration water evaporates through stomata of leaves and lenticels of stem this is the transpiration when the leaves tra transpire there is a mechanism when the leaves transpire there is a pulling effect on the continuous columns columnas columns of water in the xylem vessels the top ends of the ends of these vessels are surrounded by the leaves mesophyll cells which contain cell sap so the water is continuous from the xylem vessel to the wall of the mesophyll cells here from which it evaporates into the air spaces causing the pull the water column does does not break because of its continuous molecular attraction here water is absorbed by osmosis from the soil by the root hairs in the this is passed into the xylem vessels which from a continuous system of tubes through root and system into the leaves here the water evaporates and releases into the atmosphere the evaporation creates the main pull of water above root pressure which gives a variable and minor push from below this result in a continuous column of moving water the transportation transpiration stream okay children here the small doubt is there any relationship between transpiration and rainfall yes is there relationship between transpiration and rainfall plants eliminate excess water through transpiration it affects the saturation of water vapor in the forest whenever air currents bring water vapor to already saturated area it becomes full saturated and comes down as rain therefore there is a relationship between transpiration and rainfall okay children next we are going to transport of mineral salts you know that mineral salts are necessary for plant nutrition children yes you know that they are obtained from the soil solution through the root hairs already we know that uh, some uh, we are doing some activities also the salts are in the form of electrically charged ions sodium chloride is in the form of na plus and cl minus here na plus and cl minus is the ions and magnesium sulfate occurs as mg2 plus and so4 2 minus but they absorbed into the root hair by simple process of diffusion once ions are absorbed the ions travel along with water in the xylem vessels 
plants where they are used for growth purpose next one transport of manufactured food already you know that children food such as sugar is synthesis synthesized in the green parts of plants mainly the leaves but this food has to be transported to all living cells especially to actively growing cells and the cells which stored food this is the transport of manufactured food okay children next uh, here the best examples how extracting food materials from plants insects insects how extracting food material from plants the best example of aphid here children aphid extracting food material from plant experiments with uh, aphids provide evidence that food is transported through phloem phloem cu tubes are extremely small and the analysis of their contents is not easy aphids proboscis is the best device to obtain the cell sap from the phloem cu tubes once insects are allowed to bite the stem of plants as they feed on the plant juices to obtain this juice and a feed pyrus pyrus pyruses the plant tissues with its long needle like organ that is called proboscis an aphid is killed while in the act of feeding on the body is then carefully cut away leaving the halo proboscis still inserted into the phloem it is found the contents of the phloem the fluid slowly ex ex exudes from the cut end of the proboscis in the form of drops these drops are then collected and analyzed chemical analysis of the droplets showed that more than 80% of the total translocation is sucrose and amino acids here in children not surprisingly aphids absorb so much sugar from the phloem that they cannot assimilate all of it and it excretes out of the body as a sticky syrup called honey dew leaves which have been attacked by aphids often feel sticky as a result of honey dew this is the aphid extracting food material from plant